about 11 in the morning. I got a lot in my head. I got a lot of dreams and I'm going to try not to jump all over the place. I don't know if I'm going to make this one long one or I'll end up splitting it up. A lot of weird stuff has happened in the past week, two weeks. I'll start, I'll try and make it as coherent as possible. I'm sorry if I jump all over, but it all ties together. The last video that I had made, it cut off because I got a phone call. And I remade, I made the second part. Well, I was going through my phone, deleting stuff for room, and I clicked on something next to the second part of that video, and the second part of that video deleted. Now, what I spoke on in the second part of the video was that I was almost positive that I had figured that I was onto something that was insane, it, beyond our comprehension to believe that people do this. But I don't think I was supposed to open my mouth yet. Our sister servant of God always said, whenever you're having a problem, don't say it out loud because the devil uses that. And I think I gave myself away. Because since then, our father showed me that I was right. But it's like the stuff went into hiding. I gave it a heads up, basically, and and now again, I'm questioning what I thought I was onto might have been wrong. And I have no doubt it's because I opened my mouth before I was supposed to. I kept waiting for him to tell me, go, do it. But I think he was waiting for me to take the first step. Now, I don't remember exactly where it left off, so I'll just say this. I confronted my wife about something. And we were sitting in the basement. And she turned to me and looked at me, and I knew instantly I was not talking to my wife no more. I think that's when I was supposed to go. That's when it was supposed to start. That's when. But I was so worried about orchestrating it so I could record it. Maybe he didn't want it recorded. Maybe he didn't want people to see it. I don't think that's right though. But anyway. She turned and looked at me. And I knew right, in, right then it wasn't my wife. Her eyes were not hers no more. And whatever was speaking to me was scared to death of our father. Talking about my wife was convinced that God was having people sabotage our marriage. Because God did not condone us together. She was convinced that God hated her. I think she still is. Which I don't, well, no, it's not her. Whatever was in, whatever's in her tells her this stuff. When we lived in this other house, something happened where there was this presence outside of our bedroom that felt like it was as big as the house. I, we couldn't see nothing. And I wasn't in the state I'm in now. I knew what it was. I knew what I could have done. But I didn't because I was nowhere near our father at that point. This is like 2010. I could not get off the bed. We could not walk out of our bedroom. It was huge. She told me that night that she believed that that was God that night. And he was there and he was that angry because he did not want me with her. And I told her, I'm like, listen, I've seen heaven. I felt God's love. There is no room in our father for hate. Well, what about his wrath? I told her the wrath isn't even out of hate. There is no hate in God. There, our Father has no hate in Him. The love that I felt when heaven opened up in front of me, there is no room in that love for hate. Absolutely not. Never going to convince me otherwise. So, uh, I didn't do it. At that moment, whatever was 
in the front of her. She turned and looked at me, and I looked at her, and her eyes were this big. Her pupils were just straight black, and I got that chill, like, <gasps> It's, it's a freaky it's a freaky experience man like I've said before when I was in jail I looked into people's eyes it was like looking straight into the pits of hell empty soulless rotten and it was right there in front of me again and I thought my head I heard that voice in the back of my head what's your name that's what I was supposed to ask her and that would have set it off right then right at that moment because that thing was shook the last time with her exorcism, it occurred because I confronted with her with something. And the way her mind works, I, was, I confronted her, and Liz stepped back, and this thing came forward. Excuse me. Like her defense mechanism. But her defense mechanism is demons. Like they're in there. I have no doubt about it. It's sorry. I'm sorry to say it. She's my wife. I love her. I will stay by her side until it's time to go home, but she's just not. And I don't understand. She loves our father. I thought it was somebody else's fault. I thought that... I'm not going to talk about that. So, uh, here's the other stuff that's happened. She, I don't know if I said this. My son spoke Hebrew. Shabbat. Shabbat. Perfect. And now when I say Shabbat to him, he says, why? Because he knows that I'm telling him, stop. How my three-year-old child knows Hebrew is beyond my, beyond my ken. He said it. Perfect. As soon as he said it, I knew he was speaking. a diff Like I knew. That's Hebrew. Shabbat. Shabbat. Uh... The night that this was all occurring, we went to get in the shower. And now, there's a part of her that loves our father so much. And that part was trying to come up. And the other part was trying to do everything it could to keep it down. We went to get in the shower. I turned and looked at her. Her face was white as a ghost. She said, you see that? I said, what? She saw what she described as in a Spider-Man movie. Like if she grabbed it, it would just drip right around her hand and reform. She said it had four legs, they were long, the legs were fatter on the bottom, almost like a spider leg, but only four, like a, and it stuck its little tentacles out from under the radiator, and it, whew, I didn't see it, but I knew she'd seen it, saw it, sorry. So then we're out on the porch, and we're watching the stars, because the night before, I think it was that night, actually, the baby saw his first shooting star. And we're watching, and I'm watching, there's, as you could, you could see the stars just go black, like something's in front of them. I thought, I asked her, I said, did you see this? She said, yeah. I said, is it bats? And they were too big to be bats, so I thought maybe satellites somehow or something. But the pattern they were taking, they come and just, like a giant bird. She looked to the left and got spooked, walked in the house. I looked over in between the pine trees. And what I saw, I don't even know. All the stars blacked out. It looked like what she described in the bathroom, but on a scale of the size of, I don't, it was huge. It was, it blacked out a massive section of the sky, just black. These things were flying around our house. Now, nobody's going to believe this stuff. I don't care. I know what I see. I know what he shows me. I believe that he's given me, I don't know if it's really a gift. I've always been able to see evil, sense it. I look in people's eyes and I can tell if they're possessed. That's, I, I don't know how else to put it. So I go down the steps and I bind it. I pray, Father. You promised me that whatever I bind in heaven is bound on earth, and whatever I loose in heaven is loosed on earth. I bind these rotten things and send them back. And please loose your warring angels to put a hedge around our house. Please protect us. All right, we go to bed. 401, boom, on my roof. 
sounded like somebody dropped a freaking cannon on it. I jumped up out of bed, and in the moment it took me to go from awake, asleep to awake, my spirit, they were up there fighting, and something hit my roof. He sent something for, to protect our house, and one of them fell. So I go downstairs, and we're talking, and I'm thinking, this is nuts. I really didn't just see what I saw, like, you know, spiritually, like in my heart, head. I don't know how to put it. I don't see it. I see it. So I think, should I, should I tell her she's in? So I tell her. And right as I tell her, I look in front of me, and there's a pinprick of light, maybe the size of my pinky nail, probably not even that big, that bright, vivid, and angelic light. And it goes like this. Right as I'm telling her, like, it basically said yes. It shook, it was like it shook its head, it was real slow, and then it whoosh, and it was just gone. And I, I said, like, if one of your brothers just fell protecting my house, thank you. Uh, after that, it's like nothing ever happened. She never admitted to anything. She insists that it wasn't a picture of her and that if it was, somebody had hacked my phone and posted it to try and separate us because God doesn't want us together. I dropped it. I have not spoken of it. And uh, I don't know if that was the right thing to do. If he was waiting for me to take that initiative and just do it already. Or if it wasn't time. I believe that the time was when she looked at me and I looked in her eyes and I go, huh, got that horrible, rotten. I, Because I heard the voice. Well, what is your name? Ask it. What is your name? And that would have been it. It would have went from there. Uh, it happened again with something hitting the roof a day after, maybe a day, two days after, same time, four o'clock. Boom! Like somebody dropped a giant boulder on our roof, man. I don't know. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the roof. It's not like Something fell out of the sky and hit it. There's no visible evidence that anything touched that roof. But it was loud enough that I don't know how it didn't wake the baby. Like, something massive smashed into our roof. Uh, the dreams... I wrote a couple down 